You have all heard about interest, but do you know what compound interest is? Interest is a way of earning money on your savings account or on your investments. You earn interest if you have money in certain banks or other accounts. The bank rewards you for leaving your money in your account because they can use it to lend to other customers. Interest is also what you pay when you borrow money either from a bank when you want to buy a car or a house, or from your credit card company if you carry a balance. Let's first talk about interest as a source of accumulating income. Interest rates are usually tied to the liquidity of money. For example, if you open a savings account, you may earn a small amount of interest because you can withdraw your money at any time. Thus, the funds are considered to be liquid. Other kinds of investments, such as CDs or Certificate of Deposit, may provide you with a higher interest rate, but you may be limited as to when you can withdraw your money. They may make you wait until a certain date to withdraw your money, and if you do withdraw before that date, there may be a penalty charge. There are two types of interest, simple and compound. Simple interest is interest you earn on the money that you have deposited in your savings account or investment account. Most savings and investment accounts, however, pay interest not only on the money in your account, but also on any previous interest you have earned. That is referred to as compound interest. Compounding can occur as often as four times per year, or just once a year. That is usually determined by your bank. Let's look at an example. Assume you earn 3% interest. Simple interest on $1,000 would be $30 annually for as long as you have the investment. Compound interest on $1,000 would be $30 the first year, and then $30.90 the second year, and then $31.83 the third year, and so on. At the end of five years, you would have $1,150 in simple interest, or $1,159.28 of compound interest. So you may be thinking, Big deal, I earned an extra $9.28 in the five years. Consider that that $1,000 is actually $100,000. Now the difference in the simple versus compound interest is $9,280 over those five years, and the amount grows increasingly the longer you invest in it. Compound interest is very powerful the earlier you start to save or invest. For example, Say you started to save or invest $600 a month, earning 5% interest. That would mean you would have to set aside $7,200 a year. After 20 years, you would have $250,000, and after 30 years, you would have $500,000, even though all you saved or invested was $216,000. This number can get even higher if you invest in individual stocks or in index funds which are mutual funds held in a portfolio that are made to track similarly to a market index. Keep in mind, the stock market is riskier than just leaving your money in a savings account or a CD. The upside may be higher, but there is also a possibility that you may lose money. So you may be asking, I'm only a teen, how can I invest in the stock market at this age? Well, lucky for you, I will cover that in a later video when I discuss how to invest in the stock market for teens. When deciding how to invest your money, either through a savings account, CD, or in the market, make sure to shop around and not only compare rates, but fees and minimum balances as well. So what about the interest you pay when you borrow money from a bank or carry a balance with a credit card company? The same principle applies to that as well, but instead of accumulating wealth, you are losing it. Currently this year, credit card interest rates on average are approximately 17%. Credit card companies use the same compound interest philosophy to calculate what you owe them if you carry a balance. Let's look at an example. If you charged $2,000 on your credit card and only paid $75 a month, it would take you 34 months to pay it off, and you would have paid $529 in interest. So really, you will have paid 26% extra in interest to borrow the $2,000. Don't forget that in this example, we are assuming you will not be charged for anything else on this card, because if you do, and nothing else changes, then the amount of time and interest you will pay to pay this off will only increase. You can see how easily this can get you into debt. Remember that only when you can, use a credit card responsibly and pay the balance in full every month. Paying interest will sometimes be inevitable, like when buying a new car or paying for school. In those cases, 
always shop around to decide what is best for you.